Now you go. Okay, thanks. All right. So here we are. We <laughs> let's uh, let's see whether we can give it a uh, you know. Andrew, obviously you put the bar high. So um, let's see whether we can we can uh, give the whole thing a little uh, a bit more of a positive uh, sort of spin. Let's uh, let's try at least. <laughs> <laughs> right. So our our. Um, our panel is about sort of building uh, crypto solutions, so that's obviously a very broad um, topic. And um, so I guess the, the, the one thing that we wanted to, uh, the, the thing that we sort of want to focus on for the next sort of um, 20 minutes is, um, are basically, is, is the consumerization of, uh, of crypto, right, and token. So no, we are not sort of, um, clearly, you know, the, you know, I agree with you, Andrew, in the end of the day, the, the underlying infrastructure is something that is still, Sort of uh, a bit vague, um, but obviously there are, it's, there are more and more consumer sort of applications popping up, um, and, uh, and we've thought about sort of actually um, you know presenting two uh, or focusing on two sort of areas today. One is, um, and uh, Wobai will sort of introduce this to us in a second, um, is a metaverse carbon um, trading and offsetting platform based on NFTs. Um, we, we, uh, we we tried it out yesterday. It's it, it's actually it's working and it's uh, it's brilliant. So I'm a, uh, a, 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 a proud owner now of a uh, of a carbon offsetting um, NFT. Uh, and then all, and then um, we will um, and then Simon will sort of um, talk with us a little bit about sort of the the um, you know ab about the gaming industry, right? And there's a um, when you sort of think about sort of what's, what's happening there with the play-to-earn um, models, um, there's a there's an argument or a hypothesis that you know these these gaming um, um, companies that are emerging in the um, in the in the crypto and, and, and metaverse basically space are you know can become as big as a, as a Facebook, right? So that's at least sort of an hypothesis. Um, we see we see investors obviously you know betting on. So those are the two topics. Um, well, why don't you give us uh, um, give us a start here, um, and we um, uh, we're curious to learn more about um, your metaverse uh, carbon trading platform. Thank you, Christian. Also, appreciate uh, for become uh, one of uh, the testing user to offset make your trip from London to uh, Davos uh, carbon neutral. Thank you very much for uh, doing that. Uh, let me jump into uh, what I want to share with everybody today. But uh, before that, let me ask the audiences, how many of you know that a carbon credit has a nationality? Raise your hands. Perfect. Good. That is a problem. And uh, just as the Sandrina of uh, the Rome president uh, yesterday talked about, and then we are going to talk about the problem today, but we're also going to offer a solution a solution that uh, I've been working on over the past 10 years, mostly past two to three years. So, as an Asian uh, culture, we usually come to a friend's session, thanks, Steffi, with a gift. This is the gift with a, a bigger box. What is this? This is a one carbon neutrality token, represents one ton of a certified and a registered carbon voluntary emission credit. It's essentially a digital carbon. What do we do with that? So my friend Christian yesterday uh, put his cell phone and then uh, a screen shows up. This is nothing new. This is just an NFC uh, uh, chip inside. And then uh, let's neutralize the chip for uh, his uh, uh, travel. This actually did it myself. I travel from Singapore, put in my information of the flights, and then uh, calculation of the carbon footprint for my travel. The moment you hit the button to neutralize that uh, trip, a lot of things happen before and at the same time. Before this, we went to an Asian country to, bo to have bought carbon credits from that country. It was certified by agency. It was registered in the national registry. And then they also put a mark to say nobody in that country can trade or use it anymore for any commercial applications. And then we put it on the Ethereum blockchain. So the moment Christian put on it, and then we offset that carbon footprint. And Christian was very nice to even pay a little bit of money to buy an NFT. Actually, I put it myself on there. So this is our uh, carbon neutrality gallery. So Christian, your NFT is also in our gallery right now. So thank you very much. Why are we doing this? We're not just doing this for fun. 
We are doing this not just as a, a way to solve the carbon neutrality issues for your travel. Uh, yesterday, the Lufthansa asked the question about how many of you are going to pay $200 to neutralize of the trip. Less than one third paid. And of course, we offer a cheaper solution, $20 to $30 each to make it happen. We are trying to solve a much bigger problem. That problem is something that I think initially people don't appreciate as much. COP26 happened in Glasgow, that's perfect. And that everybody should be happy. But this is the immediate reaction from developing country. The finance minister said no. Why? Why not selling the carbon credit from emerging country to develop the world to make it a benefit and then get the capital? Why did they say no? A few days ago, European uh, Parliament's uh, Environmental Committee approves the CBAM, carbon border tax. That's great, because we do need a system to avoid carbon leakages. Is anyone thinking for the developing country? What about now for us? So, when you think about all this, what the hell is going on with this carbon market? How do you solve the problem? Uh, the last conversation yesterday was by Professor McPhee from MIT talking about the geek's way to solve the problem. Uh, I'm actually MIT trained in physics uh, PhD, so I don't know any other way <laughs> other than a geeky way. <laughs> so the first part of the geeky way gets you to the root of the problem. The second part, trying to find an unconventional solution. What is the root of the cause of the problem? The problem started in 2015 when everybody was so excited. We signed the Paris Agreement. Everyone in that picture signed their country up for the carbon emission reduction targets to the United Nations, a term called the Nationally Determined Contribution that NDC lovely words put a carbon credit, a passport, a nationality, because now if you sell your carbon to another country, you need to find a ways to change the passport. And that change is called a corresponding adjustment and then if you don't change, because until Glasgow, and that system is not in place, that's why nothing was happening. When the world is warming up to the crisis, there's not much carbon flowing around credit to solve the problem. So, that is uh, the challenge, is why the developing countries cannot or do not, do not want to sell the carbon credits to the developed world anymore, because in Kyoto Protocol, the developing world did not sign up to it. In the Paris Agreement, all our developing countries signed up to it. If I sell the carbon credits to European Union, how am I going to meet with the, my target to the United Nations? So that is the conundrum. That is the issue arising from the carbon's passport issue. Let's take a deeper drive into this. Another question is, when Christian bought this uh, uh, carbon, uh, you offset his trip, a carbon credit was purchased, neutrality was reached, were you really trying to help the United Kingdom to achieve carbon neutrality or to satisfy the United Nations requirement? You were not really thinking about it. And some and more and more companies are doing that because you want to do it. That's your net zero commitment. That's what you want to do to your customers, to your shareholders. But at the same time, developing world saying, if I sell this, and then you satisfy your country. So there is one assumption people made a long time ago was company climate action equals to country climate action. Really so? Why does it have to be that way? So that is the problem we're trying to solve. And the solution from a, a physicist who has been working on the green investment over the past 15 years. I also own a private equity firm, $2 billion called Asia Green Fund in China. So it's a geeky way to solve an unconventional problem is a way Duality, wave and particles are the same. Wave is particle, particle is wave. That's where metaverse come into play. And then to uh, the former speaker, and I highly respect many of the comments, because Web 3.0 cannot solve many, many of the problems, but they solve some. So we are creating a duality between the real world and the metaverse. What the real world does, the real world needs a national registry to make sure this carbon credit is really generated, it's not W's, W double counted by anybody. This is not some blockchain uh, kids can solve the problem. And at the same time, you create this uh, 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 system to represent that, and then make it uh, a tradable security. So the whole solution is a separate national ownership. Let what belongs to the nation to the nation. Let all the commercial applications reside on this token that I just showed you. 
and then that is in Ethereum blockchain. And then you safeguard the integrity on both ways, on both hand in the real world process, and on the other hand, blockchain, even the government from the developing country once it's created, cannot change that anymore. So that is how the solution works. So you need to represent the asset in the metaverse. The natural solution is, okay, NFT. NFT is immutable, which means that it is only good for that asset. When we have a carbon project, when we have a real green project, new information is added to it every day. So it doesn't work for live assets, for which a, ge a geeks, a developed technology, combine NFT technology with a digital twin to represent the carbon project in the digital realm as an avatar, from an old finance asset back security to avatar back token. So that's how we build that. But unfortunately, when you do that, when you have a fraction of ownership, the infrastructure sucks. You have to get into the security. It took two years to apply for a license. Does this work? Uh, we had to pick one country, uh, ideally small country, with, uh, uh, with uh, a carbon registry to test it out. Uh, we chose uh, one small country called China to have done that uh, proof of concept. And uh, the problem is the infrastructure even sucks for many countries. They don't have even a carbon registry. So we're working with a few countries to give us our uh, NFDT-backed registry for them to in order to create the infrastructure. Somebody got to do the work. And then if you created this, well, people acknowledge it. And it then took us a few months to work with a very lovely uh, British standards institution for them to take this in to do a carbon neutrality certificate that is near ISO standard. And then once we get all this infrastructure done, and our friends in Europe, in US, in every place else, can do event organizer, you know, gift card, carbon credit cards, everything else, make them free flowing uh, product. So this is the way that uh, we are building this exchange, really is the infrastructure to solve the problem for emerging market that uh, needs to tackle the carbon's uh, passport issue, but at the same time, make it applicable more widely to developed countries such as Europe. So that's uh, our efforts to make carbon global again. So thank you. Perfect. Very insightful. Um, the, um, the other sort of area we wanted to sort of focus on is, uh, is, is sort of the gaming, the gaming industry. Um, Simon, I, I said at the beginning that uh, there's sort of the assumption or the hypothesis that you know, these um, pay to, uh, pay, uh, play to earn uh, models sort of can, can become as big as, as Facebook. Would you agree with that or is that, is that too ambitious? I would actually say uh, the chance is to become even bigger uh, and uh, relating to um, to, to the previous speaker, I think they can become bigger. The question is, uh, who will benefit from the size of those, and like, who will own them in the end? Um, and now, now I have a little bit of a tough spot here because uh, I'm talking about gaming after somebody talked about um, carbon uh, removal, uh, and I'm a, I'm a VC um, as my main job, uh, and <laughs> deeply caring about the people, obviously. <laughs> uh, not, not just uh, for no. Of course, we're uh, we're here to um, to invest uh, invest money and ideally invest it in technology that not only benefits us, um, but of course it should also um, benefit us uh, in in the long run. The, the the point I wanted to make is talking next to somebody speaking about carbon um, and carbon removal and how crypto can can work in that um, in that industry. Maybe just as a side comment, because we're as a fund looking in that in that area as well. Five percent of the um, um, of the carbon credits voluntary carbon markets uh, last year uh, in 2021 have been bridged on chain so it's not something that is kind of completely like not not happening there is some some real things happening on chain and these five uh, Five percent of volunteer, of the voluntary carbon markets are now tradable tradable on chain uh, in various aspects. So I think there's crypto. Crypto is not a um, something that is a, a solution on its own or just crypto for the sake of crypto. But I think in, in this in this area we see we see the benefits that crypto can have to 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 different parts of the economy. And I think we should all think about where can we use crypto in order to make an experience better than it was before. And, and now that brings me a little bit to gaming um, and, and social networks. I think 
um, like humans are social beings, so they want to uh, be in, in social networks, social surroundings, and gaming is obviously um, what people like to do in their, in their free time. It's, the question is, what, what does crypto add to, to gaming? And I think one of the, or, or crypto to gaming and social networks in general, I think one of the big differences is that crypto can actually bring ownership to a digital economy. Like before that, you could not own something in the digital economy. Um, and that's, that's a huge step in, in what you can do um, when it comes to playing with others, if you can measure and exchange economic activity, then most of the experience you have become much more enticing. Um, one, one example is like we, we have the first, first data suggests that people, if they own the assets, the in-game assets they buy, like um, virtual goods they buy, they are more likely to spend they're likely to spend about 10 times the money they would if the assets are owned by some central gaming party that can basically take it away from them. So, so I think in, in general what crypto enables is that people can actually own their assets and can start, um, can start trading these assets around, making the, the social activity and the gaming activity much more immersive uh, compared to, to how it was before. Yeah, a couple of couple of numbers like you, you all probably know about NFTs and, and what's happening with NFTs in the world. NFTs um, is already there. It's it's big. It's about a billion dollars in trading volume each day. So like 300, uh, 300 billion a year approximately. Twenty percent of that volume is gaming related. So it's virtual goods that people um, play games with are exchanging hands uh, as NFTs nowadays already. And if you, if you compare like older games and newer games, for example, like everybody knows Fortnite. Um, probably you guys, <laughs> some, some of you are playing, uh, some, some of you have children who are playing Fortnite. Um, it's about 350 million players in, in Fortnite. Um, and the company does about 2 billion in revenue a year. If you contrast that to the, to the most uh, successful crypto game, Axie Infinity, um, it has about 1 million players. So 1 million compared to 350 million players. But the econ economic value that's traded in there is approximately the same size. So it's approximately a billion in assets in uh, Axie Infinity that people, that people trade. And I think that, that shows very nicely that people in the virtual world want to own assets. Um, and that makes the experiences in these worlds much more immersive than they, than they have been before. I think um, like one of the points you, you were also making, like what are, what are these games? Are these, are these going to be social networks or, or not? And I think one of, the, um, like one of the, the things about social networks is that in the past you had, um, like there were only a couple of winners. Because if you wanted to play in the biggest of them, because you had the incentive um, to only go there where the, mo the most eyeballs were, where the business model is eyeballs. If you, if you think about crypto, what crypto enables is that it's much more easy to start a new game from scratch and incentivize people to start playing that game and, and interacting with each other, um, even without having these huge network effects. So I think what we will see is that the whole Gaming and social network space will become much, much bigger than we know from, from Facebook and, uh, and Instagram and, and the old gaming world. But I think it will be less centralized. It will be not one entity like Facebook that owns everything. It will be different entities and it will be also more, more equitable distributed among the people that actually, um, that actually create the value in, in these worlds. And I, I want to close with one um, <laughs> one, one other fact uh, and number, because I like numbers. Um, the average creator on Spotify earns about $7. The average creator on YouTube earns about $2.50. The average creator in the NFT space over the last year earned more than 100,000 US dollars. Of that 100,000 US dollars, um, the platform where the economic value has been traded was mostly like an NFT exchange uh, called, called OpenSea. The cut they take is 2.5%. If you compare that to the cut that, for example, a Spotify takes of all the revenue and how much is kind of distributed to the people who actually create it, um, there it's more like 20, 30%. 
um, then if you if you look, uh, YouTube is more like fifty percent. And if you look in the in, in the gaming industry, actually, when you when you buy a digital sword in Fortnite, for example, you don't own that. So it's actually a hundred percent tax. So somebody creates it, but the only party that benefits is the creator of the game. And I think that is that is changing. Um, creators can and will earn more money um, in the in the crypto world. Um, and the crypto world in general will be much, much bigger than, than everything we've seen before in terms of yeah, the social interaction between people as it adds an economic layer on top of the social activity. Great, thank you. Maybe <coughs> we, clo you know, we, we don't have much time left. Maybe we just close with one, um, one last thought. So you know, what, are the, what are the areas you, know, you are, apart from gaming or apart from sort of the carbon <laughs> Uh, trading. Um, what are the areas you know you're the most excited about um, in the crypto and NFT world? So for 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 us, it's actually related to carbon. Uh, we also do use this platform to finance uh, the asset backed securities for wind, for solar, for solid state batteries, and then these are essentially the hard real assets where the carbon. Um, uh, credits are supposed to generate from. So we are really building up is uh, with uh, the NFDT technology, non-fungible digital twin technology backed, avatar backed token market. And you, Simon? Um, we're, <laughs> we're pretty agnostic, but we, we, we're looking at spaces where crypto can tra change and, and can really have a benefit. And I think actually the carbon markets are, are uh, yeah, prone to be the first market that will be mostly on chain and, and not on chain, not off chain anymore. Um, as soon as it, it grows in volume, the, the way we all want that. And we're currently investing actually quite heavily in all the crypto infrastructure that makes it possible to, to trade um, carbon on chain, but also how to incentivize people in the real world and real economy um, to get carbon out of the air using token economics. This is an area we're very interested in about. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it.